Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want us to stand on our feet. Let's all stand on our feet. And we are going to sing a short chorus. Behold, he comes. Uh huh. Where's the choir? The king is coming, the king has come, but you're so cold. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hosanna in the highest. Tell your neighbor, Hosanna in the highest. Yes, the king has come down for us. And say we sing, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hallelujah. And so today, as we focus on our theme for today, rejoice, your king is coming. It's very interesting 
that even the writer didn't say my king, but said your king is coming. Do you know who your king is? Do you know who your king is? Yes, indeed your king is coming. But I want to ask us a question or a scenario. Have you ever been there and you are expecting something? How many of us have always expected something? In one way or the other. Oh yes, so at that time of your expectation, you're waiting. How do you feel? Please speak louder. How do you feel? Anxious. Okay, someone else, how do you feel? When you're waiting, at that period of waiting. Excited. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have different expectations. When we are looking out for something, waiting for something, one of the ladies who gave a testimony about the visa. And so in that process of waiting, you're expecting that something good is going to come out. But lo and behold, but still there is hope. Hallelujah. Because your king has come unto you. And so we wait and wait and expect something good that is going to come up. I just imagine at that time when you're expecting that... Maybe your parent has promised you something, that when you perform better, I will bring you, you know, something, a gift. And in that waiting, you're just imagining, what is my dad going to bring for me? How about my mother? What about my sister? Whoever has promised you, and you're eagerly waiting, and sometimes... Because your expectation maybe is too high or is too low or you cannot even tell. You're waiting and when even a present is brought unto you, you're like, I, I don't think this is mine. Yet in actual sense, it belongs to you. And so this happened to the Jews. The Jews were waiting and expecting the Savior, Jesus Christ. But because, you know, it was a time where there is a king and, you know, how many of us are Baganda here? Are you a Muganda? Yes, we the Baganda have the Kawaka. And you know when the Kawaka is coming, what happens? Those who know the Kawaka really know him. But those of us who do not know the Kawaka, we keep asking, where is he? Even when he has arrived. And so these Jews were expecting this king because they were used to kings who were coming on white donkeys, you know, and they have gone to wars and so on and so forth. And they are coming out victoriously, but these were wars. The drunker was going for wars, and these wars, whenever they would win, was victorious. But it's so unfortunate that as I waited for this king, many of them were expecting, you know, a king to come so high. Maybe these days you're like, let's say you're expecting a president to, to no, the archbishop, our archbishop to come here. And you know, we are waiting, expecting him to come in this, maybe, let me say Prado, maybe. Oh, a hammer. You know that expensive car, that high, high class. But maybe he comes in if it is. How many of us would really think it is the archbishop? And so, these Jews were waiting for the king. And lo and behold, the king just comes on this small donkey. Not like the donkeys that the kings of that time used to ride on as they went for battle or war. And so Zechariah now comes. These are the children of Israel is writing at a time when the children of Israel had returned back all the way from Babylon because they had been in exile. Of course, they had returned home with joy, but they had found their temple was already down, and it's a time they are thinking of rebuilding it. And so much as they were happy with that joy, but there was that thing, is this how is our temple? And that was a temple of those days. This is our temple. But the, today we are talking about now, your temple now is you, your body. You are the temple of the Lord. But then as he was coming into this temple, when you read in the gospel of Matthew, 
chapter 21, around verse 12. You see, they tell us that when Jesus entered the temple, he found when people were there selling, doing so many things, and he turned the, tab the tables upside down. All the money exchangers, all that was in there was disorganized. It was like a marketplace. You know, just imagine if you slopped down here to Nakasero Market, and you know, the president comes and is turning everything upside down. What does that symbolize? And so here now, Zechariah is telling the children of Israel, do not worry, rejoice. Why should they rejoice? In verse 9, Zechariah 9.9, 9, he says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey. He's telling them to rejoice. Rejoice because the king is coming. And this is a king that is coming with the good news. Is a king coming with a message of hope. Is a king coming with a salvation message. A message that is going to change them, to transform them out of their rebellious life. And so today, as we sing, as we proclaim, rejoice. The king is coming. The king is coming unto you. Probably you have that situation in your life that it seems not to be shifting. And here is coming the king, the Messiah. And he's saying, rejoice because I am coming. I'm the righteous God. I want to dine with you. I want to set you free. This donkey is a sign that Jesus is coming with peace. And every time we get the palm, these are palm branches. It's a symbol of peace. And this is a king that is coming. Have you been troubled? Jesus Christ, the king, is coming unto you as a peaceful God. He's coming unto you as a man of peace trying to bring you peace. Are you questioning yourself? Are you asking yourself so many questions? Are you troubled? Jesus is saying rejoice because I am coming. Rejoice because your questions are going to be answered. Rejoice that situation that is troubling you. I am going to set you free. I am going to carry it away. And as he comes saying rejoice greatly, will you rejoice when the king comes unto you? And so these prophecies that Zechariah was declaring to the children of Israel, they apply to us. And when the king comes unto us, we rejoice amidst the trials, amidst the temptations, amidst tribulation. Just like Paul says, there will be tribulations in this world. But then when the king comes, you rejoice because he is coming with hope. He is coming with restoration. And so as we continue to read now, going down, he says, humble and mounted on a donkey. This king is so humble. Just imagine the president of the Republic of Uganda comes here walking on foot. Will that make sense to us? Or he himself is on a donkey. Will surely that make sense to us? There are so many questions that each one of us is going to ask. Imagine Jesus Christ riding on a donkey and coming unto us. Coming unto the people that he is coming unto when you read in the Gospels. There are crowds. He's coming to the crowds, young and old. And as he's coming, he is so humble on his donkey. And many people are laying down their cloth. And he is passing. What comes into your mind? What comes into your mind seeing a person of high caliber coming down to you in a form that you never expected? That's how Jesus comes unto us. In his humility, he comes down unto us, humble as he was, 
on a donkey. We expected him, the Jews expected him to come on that maybe very big and glamorous animal. But he chose to come on that small donkey, on that cloth. Jesus is coming unto you in a form that you least expect. And that's how he's going to come unto us. And when he comes unto us, how will he find us? Will we re welcome him? Shall we receive him when he comes? Or oh, you're like, no, because you're putting on a sweater, please go away. I don't know you. But the Lord is coming unto you. He's knocking on your door and saying, I am coming unto you. And so will you rejoice in a form that he comes unto you. In verse 10, he says, I will cut off the chariot of Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. Praise the Lord. He comes with peace. And as he says, he's going to cut off the chariots. That was the end of the war. Many trust in their chariots. Where is our trust? Where is your hope? Will you trust in the chariots? Or you will trust in the God that is going to cut off the chariots? And so he's telling the children of Israel that come down, fear not, the time is up when I'm going to cut off the chariots. When I'm going to restore your peace, when I'm going to restore you without joy. And as the chariots were being used in battle, he's cutting them off. And he's saying, because I am the prince of peace, I am appearing to you. And I'm bringing you peace that you yourself cannot even tell. The peace that God gives is much more than the peace that this world offers. And that is a Christ that is coming unto us. And so as he says, he's going to cut off the chariots. As if that is not enough, he says, I will speak and bring peace to the nations. Praise the Lord. And as he's coming this day, he's bringing us peace. Are you troubled? The Lord is coming to you with peace. But what does he want of us? He requires us to have open hearts, the hearts that are ready to receive that peace that he's going to bring unto us. If you have a hard-hearted heart, it is a time that the Lord wants to break it down, wants to amend your ways, wants to amend your thoughts so that you can have this peace. Sometimes when you are there, and you have questions that you cannot answer. Who do you run to? You run to the Prince of Peace. The God who answers by fire, by thunder. The God who answers your questions. Who knows everything that concerns you. It's the Lord that we run unto. Some of us who come from families where... So, uh, most of the time you're fighting with your sibling. Your parents are like, uh-uh. And you are like, God, where is my peace? Why am I here? But he's saying I am bringing peace, peace to the nation. You are the nation. A chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You are the nation that this peace Jesus is bringing unto you. And so will you open your heart to receive this King of Kings who is coming this day, who has come this day triumphantly riding on the donkey and he will appear to you in a form that you do not understand. At that time when you're having a lot of tears that are flowing and you don't know who will wipe away your tears and how your tears will be wiped away. He's saying, I have come to wipe away your tears and I will give you peace. Praise the Lord. And so as we think of that, that is troubling us, that, that our eyes are fixed on and seems not to be shifting, the Prince of Peace has come this afternoon 
has come this morning, has come this day, and he has come to restore your peace unto you. And so the reason is telling us, rejoice greatly. It's not just rejoice. He says, rejoice greatly. Rejoice beyond. When peace like a river attendeth your way, attendeth my way, there is that refreshing that comes. How you feel. And that's why he says, rejoice greatly, not just rejoice. Praise the Lord. And so the children of Israel were to rejoice greatly because their battles, their wars were going to be ended. We are going to be finished. And so that victory was going to be recorded. When Jesus comes, you triumph victoriously as a child of God. Do not hold back. Do not harden your heart. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes knocking, open the door for him and you receive your victory. Hallelujah. And verse 11, he says, as for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so, in this verse, he's telling us that yes, we are sinners. But when he comes, he will wash away our sins. He will bring us to himself. All he wants us is to open ourselves unto him. Shall we open ourselves unto him that he will pick us out, out of that pit, out of that waterless pit? And when Jesus picks you out of that waterless pit, he gives you restoration. And his covenant, the new covenant, is a covenant that he has brought unto us. Where his son died for you and died on the cross. Jesus paid the price. And as we rejoice greatly, we rejoice in him because he is going to restore unto us. Praise the Lord. And in verse 12, he says, return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will store to you double. Praise the Lord. And so, the question now is, what does it mean to be a prisoner of hope? He is here telling us to rejoice greatly because he has come. And again, he is saying that return to your stronghold, O prisoner of hope. Who is a prisoner of hope? Those who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, who take a hold of him. No matter the storms of life, no matter the circumstances, you still cling unto Jesus. Because you have accepted him, you have acknowledged him, you are walking a journey with him. You're a prisoner of hope. Prisoners of hope, they cling unto Jesus. They proclaim the good news of Christ. They're like, yes, Lord, I take a hold of you. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. All that matters is that you are here with me. And so, when you become a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, you become a prisoner of his hope. You become one of the partakers. And you're like, Lord, I offer my life, I offer myself as a living sacrifice unto you. You're sacrificing unto the Lord. You're not conforming to the standards of this world. When others are saying, let's go to the club, you're like, no, I know the one I have believed. I am holding on to him because he is mine and I am his. When others are saying, oh, let's go and, you know, those who are in boarding schools, sorry, you're not here. Those who have been in boarding schools and you're like, oh, let's go and teach these senior ones, you know. Oh, let's go and, you know, beat up this and you're like, no, I am not a party to that. Why? Because I have been attached to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is there with me. And I want to be there with him forever. 
shall you be that prisoner of hope. You hope in the Lord. Sometimes when you do not have, sometimes when you have prayed about a particular situation and it is not shifting, you are like, Lord, no, I am not about to give up because there is that which you do not see that the Lord has for you in store. Where is your hope? Where is your trust? And as we become prisoners of hope, our hope is in the Lord. The psalmist says, I lift up my eyes to the hill. Where does my hope come from? My hope comes um, from the Lord. And so as I draw towards the conclusion, I would like us to understand that when Jesus Christ came and appeared unto us, in Matthew chapter 21, verse 10, he says that the city was stirred up. And as he was triumphantly entering Jerusalem, the city was stirred up. Why was the city stirred up? They were expecting the Messiah. Are you expecting the Messiah? The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 10 reads, And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? We could be asking ourselves, Who is this king that is coming unto us? Who is he? How does he look like? This king is the giver of life. This king is the prince of peace. This king is the one who restores unto us. This is the king that we are receiving today. And as we go through this holy week, just know that you are walking through this holy week with the king of kings that has come unto you. Many do not know him. The Jews do not, do not recognize him. That's why they were expecting Someone that will come in a different form. But he appeared in a form that they never expected. And so the king has come unto us. And so shall we rejoice and sing Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. He calls us to be humble. Shall we be humble like Jesus? Shall we be humble like this king as he came? And appeared to the crowds and the locals. Among the crowds were the Pharisees. And these are the people who had walked with Jesus. They knew his ministry. But they were among the people that were denying. Let's not deny the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's not deny the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we have seen it. We have heard it. And we have read the word. And we know. And as we continue to praise and glorify the name of the Lord, let's know that the Prince of Peace has appeared unto us and is going to give us this peace. He's going to restore unto us this joy of salvation. If you were at the verge of giving up on Jesus Christ, I am here to tell you this morning that the Lord is here with you. He's not yet about to give up on you. And the children of Israel had just returned from exile in Babylon. They had a lot that was going on in their mind. But the Lord was telling them, rejoice greatly because your king has come. And so this is our message for you this morning. Rejoice greatly because the king, Jesus Christ, has come unto us. And therefore, we do not hope as people who have no hope, but we hope as those who have seen and have had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you have so many expectations in life, just know that your expectations can only be met by the Lord Jesus Christ. All he requires of us is to be humble. How do we humble ourselves before the Lord? How do you humble yourself amidst people of different class, people of different status? 
Some may be underlooking you, but how do you humble yourself? Some may be even questioning, why are you here? But the Lord is like, no, this is your place. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Let's close our eyes and pray. And as we pray, you could be there, and you have not made a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the time for you to commit yourself unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you there being troubled and troubled and questioning? Who is this Lord? Who is this Jesus Christ? He is coming unto us in different forms. He's coming unto us, speaking unto us. Are you there and you have no peace? The Lord has told us that He's bringing peace to the nations. The Lord of peace, the Lord who restores, is coming to you to restore unto you. Are you there in a classroom, in a lecture hall, and sometimes you are troubled, questioning God, why me? Lord, I need a name, but you see it's not coming. The Lord is saying, take heart. I am here. He was over. He's a Jesus. He's a God who is not violent. He comes with peace. And so, Lord Jesus Christ, it is our prayer this morning that you speak to each one of us, Lord. You know, Lord, our hearts. You know what we are troubled with. King of glory, you know that which we have come unto you in prayer. You know that, O Lord, that has made us to cry, O King of glory. Abba Father, is our prayer this morning. That as you come unto us, O Lord, triumphantly, Lord, riding on a donkey, O Lord, Abba Father, ride in our hearts, my master. The Lord, you will clear that which has troubled us, O Lord. Abba Father, we come to you with open hearts, Lord, and pray that you'll meet each one of us at our points of need, Lord, and that you will speak to each one of us, O King of glory. It is you that we look up to. It is you that we wait upon, O Lord, that Abba Father, when we knock on your door, you'll open for us, O King of glory, that when we seek you, Lord, we will find you. Be exalted and be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray.